In this video, I'm going to show how to use high voltage plasma discharges for cool photography effects, commonly known as curly in photography. This technique uses two glass plates with a gap between them that's filled with salt water. The salt water is connected to a high voltage, high frequency AC source and effectively becomes one plate of a capacitor. When grounded objects come near the glass, they give off a purple glow known as corona discharge. What's special about the discharge in this particular case is that it's coming off an electrical insulator. See, the glass doesn't actually allow the high voltage to conduct through it. What's happening here is basically wireless power transfer over a very short distance. Let's just look at the bottom sheet of glass since that's what we're really concerned with. When the salt water is raised to a high voltage, electrostatic induction causes the bottom surface of the glass to accumulate an opposite charge. So if, for example, the water was at 40,000 volts above ground, the bottom of the glass would be at 40,000 volts below ground. When a grounded electrode comes near the glass, that 40,000 volt difference, either positive or negative, jumps over. What's cool about this particular kind of arc is that it fans out at the surface of the glass, which makes the glow more dramatic than a typical high voltage arc. In a conductive electrode, the charges would basically coalesce at one point when they arc over to the opposite electrode, forming an arc that's basically a line between two points. But on the glass, they can't coalesce in one location because they can't really move about freely on the surface of the glass since it's an insulator. This means you'll get a discharge over approximately the whole area that's close enough to jump the air gap to the grounded electrode, which looks really cool and makes pretty pictures. Okay, that's enough theory. Let's get to the build. I built one of my usual AC flyback transformers powered off a ZVS driver. Same basic configuration as many of my other videos, but this one was wound to put out around 20,000 volts with a 12 volt input to the driver. I potted it in resin, off-gassed it in a vacuum, put everything together, and hooked it up to the driver to try it out. Pretty good looking arcs. Before going to the effort of building a fixture with flat plates, I wanted to make sure the high voltage supply I made would work, so I grabbed a glass jar and filled it with salt water, then stuck one side of my secondary into the jar and grounded the other side. As you can see, it works quite nicely, and you can even see the discharge on the other side through the water, which is what I'll be doing later, but with smooth flat plates. As an interesting aside, the arcs from the salt water are kind of yellowish orange instead of the typical purple. I'm assuming that's the sodium ionizing. In this state, the arc looks more like a regular flame than an electrical discharge. Now, to make a long story short, I ended up being unable to use that high voltage supply for the flat plate fixture because of a design oversight I made when I designed the transformer. See, the input voltage is relatively low, meaning there needs to be a very large turns ratio on the coil windings. Problem is, that made the secondary coil inductance so high at the operating frequency of around 100 kilohertz parasitic capacitance was larger than the resonant capacitance, and depending on what the output was hooked up to or what objects were nearby, the transformer output would behave really erratic and put out way less voltage than it was supposed to, even without the windings arcing to each other. I'll probably dive into more detail on this subject in a future video. Anyway, I did away with the flyback transformer and actually built a small solid state Tesla coil using a Slayer exciter circuit just like the one from my previous video. Because the circuit self oscillates, it would always be running at resonance regardless of what kind of capacitive load is placed on the output. I didn't measure, but based on the distance, it looks like it's putting out at least 40 or 50,000 volts. Let's try the glass jar again, this time with the Tesla coil. The arcs are noticeably longer and fan out over a wider distance on the surface of the glass. This is actually working a lot better than I expected. I tried building a flat plate fixture with acrylic sheets, but that turned out to be a huge mistake. The heat melted a hole right through the acrylic and shorted the output and left a permanent mark in the material. So yeah, that's not going to work. I'm going to need real glass. So I glued together some 3D printed segments that I attached to some big glass discs from an old end table using clear silicon caulk, but then I had the really stupid idea of trying to drill holes in the glass to get fill ports and electrodes through the surface. This ended about how you'd expect. For attempt number two, I simply used 8 by 10 inch glass sheets meant for picture frames and used a brass barbed fill port that would double as a high voltage electrode. 
I also had to seal with CA glue because the silicon caulking would always get pinhole leaks no matter how hard I tried to seal it up. To fill it, I just stand it on edge and pour salt or water through a funnel connected to the fill port with some silicon tubing. Now the setup is ready to go, so let's try it out. I could potentially get really cool pictures of my hands and fingers using this thing, but after two or three seconds, it becomes too painful to hold onto and it leaves burn marks on the outer layer of my skin. Let's try a screwdriver. Here you can really see that characteristic fanning out of the discharge that I was talking about earlier. Again, this is not conduction through the glass. This is capacitive coupling where electrostatic induction is causing charges to build up on the very outer surface of the non-conductive glass, then jump across the air to the screwdriver because the voltage difference is that high. This is happening about 350,000 times per second. I can almost start a fire from the discharge between the glass and my finger, and with a screwdriver it pretty much happens effortlessly. I can't do anything with high voltage, high frequency AC without also showing off the wireless power component of it. The glass sheet can illuminate the CFL bulb from almost two feet away. Anyway, let's get back to the matter at hand, the discharge photography. Let's try this British Pound again. This is the same one that melted a hole through the acrylic sheet earlier. I'm guessing I'll have better luck with the glass. Here I'm varying the input voltage to the Tesla coil driver from about 6 volts to 18 volts, which causes the discharge shape and intensity to change. Let's kill the lights and try it in the dark.
So yeah, this is a pretty cool toy. I guess the only real downside is that it's limited to relatively flat conductive objects, but I guess if you've got a cool collection of coins or knives, this would be a really great way to show them off. The room I'm in smells like ozone now, so I think I need to open a window.